I'm from a town in Pennsylvania. A lot of the art that I make is, is I think about other people's art. I would say that I am a poet, I am a performance artist, and I am a video film director. I'd say my practice mm -hmm. in many ways thinks about the queer imagination as well as kind of the white working class imagination. Right now I'm working on something with Peter Pan. I try to work with art that is well known and so that anyone has kind of an entryway into it. And maybe for artists and the art crowd, maybe I can surprise them that this thing that they think is like cute or lowbrow is actually really interesting. I'm working on Peter Pan because I think it's about transness. It's about a boy who is always played by a girl, written by someone who was born a man who just wanted to be a mother. J.M. Barry uh, was kind of a surrogate mother to a group of three boys, and that is how this kind of started to emerge for him. That's kind of a space in my life where I am a little bit at this moment and thinking about um, what it means for kind of trans motherhood and, and how that fits into kind of cultural narratives. Peter Pan's been done so many times. Um, over the course of the last hundred years, it actually started as a stage play in London. I say it to people sometimes and they're like, oh, it was first a Disney movie. And I'm, I'm like, no, it was written like 50 years before that. And I think it's about the white colonialist imagination. Like even like white male, like we have Peter who dreams of a place that is like the best place he could ever dream of. And it's basically a place where he like maintains innocence all the time and fights people. He has a little crew of boys who just do everything that he wants. And he has some like enemies that he fights. So this is a Peter Pan adaptation in which no one person plays Peter, no one person plays Wendy, no one person plays Hook. Right, I have literally been having people from the Omaha community come over. They play each of those roles and I ask them about like what it feels like to occupy that particular body or that particular role. I'm very interested in how bodies that don't fit an archetype. So it's interesting, I'll ask people which of these characters most resonate. I'll have three people come in in a row and one person picks Peter, one person picks Wendy, one person picks Hook, or two people come in in a row and pick Hook and say something different about why um, he is the most interesting to them. And often the people who identify the deepest are the people whose bodies do not fit who would normally get cast in that role. And that's something that I want people to be able to project themselves into these fantasies and be able to imagine whatever they want to be. And I think that also seeing all sorts of different bodies, whether they be different gendered bodies, different raced bodies, that inside of there, then the people watching get to be like, oh, this archetype is actually very expansive. So to me, it's more about getting as many different perspectives on Peter Pan as I can possibly scrunch into this thing. So having um, a campy pirate dance, all the musical versions have that. And I was like, that's part of these that I really love. We're gonna have one of those. Former Caitlin Little and I, we went to uh, the selfie spot and I talked to Caitlin about like Richard Linklater, John Cassavetes, these like very like trying to be very realistic because my work is not very realistic at all. And I try to have it not be realistic. And so I was like, well, what happens if I take the most unrealistic thing you can possibly think of, which is Peter Pan and Wendy breaking up? And what if I make it like these iconic breakup scenes? My intern Hannah, who, her like cracking uh, solo cups on her head as Peter Pan, like Peter Pan as a frat boy. Shoving as many Peter Pans as possible in there, and that's why I'm calling it Pans.